it's Markle versus Markle. That's Meghan Markle, who's married to Prince Harry, and her sister, Samantha Markle, who is suing her for defamation. There's quite a bit of info in here, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Yeah. This is coming out of the United States District Court for the Middle District of Florida, Tampa Division. Samantha Markle versus Meghan Markle, first amended complaint for damages. I'm going to skip the jurisdiction here, but you will see that the damages sought are in excess of $75,000. The parties, the plaintiff here and after referred to as Mrs. Markle is a private citizen who of course is independent and of age and lives in Florida. The Duchess is a private American citizen who is also independent and, and and of age and resides in California. And they are both subject to personal jurisdiction in Florida because she's committed intentional tortious acts within the state of Florida. At least that's what they're alleging. Okay, let's go through these facts. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole complaint in one video. We'd be here for a long time and I'd have to have a snack. We're going to just go through the facts. I'll save the actual piece about the defamation for a separate video. Besides, I think you'll have enough information here to get the background so that you can then see what's being claimed. All right. Paragraph number five is where we're going to start. The Duchess is an American actress who has achieved success and fame in her own right. However, as fate had it, she met and ultimately married Prince Harry, grandson of Queen Elizabeth of the British Empire. For reasons of her own, the Duchess distanced herself and denied familiarity or closeness to her family, including Mrs. Markle, who is the Duchess's half-sister on their father's side. During their childhood, the Duchess was very close to her older sister, despite their 17 age difference. Mrs. Markle was more than a model to follow, but she was also the one who regularly drove the Duchess to school and helped her with her homework went on shopping trips to the local mall, and overall had a wonderful relationship with her younger sister. During the years which followed, including the time in which the Duchess was succeeding in her career as an actress, the two sisters continued to have a good and close relationship. Unfortunately, it was after the Duchess met and became engaged to Prince Harry that their relationship became estranged and hostile. Okay, factual background. The first sign of their relationship becoming unraveled was in 2018 when the Duchess married Prince Harry. Although there had not been any communications between the sisters since late 2015, the situation between the sisters was not perceived to be different or estranged. As Ms. Markle knew and understood how busy the Duchess had become with her TV series and her need to travel around the world. Let me just take a momentary break here to talk about that because she has now put in this document that there were no communications between the two of them for three whole years. I have sisters, you know, who it really differs on who you're talking to. It's very different if you grow up with someone from the time they're born and you live with them the entire course of your life. In many instances, I have relatives who don't see their half siblings as half siblings because they grew up entirely together and they just see that person as their sister or brother, period. That relationship stays. Now, let's, we, we all know, let's just go ahead and put this out there, that we fall in and out sometimes with family, just as we do with friends. And there may be periods of time where we don't talk to people. Whether or not they were estranged might depend on which position you're in. I, I don't know. But we will see how some of this plays out when Meghan Markle responds in her answer. But right now, Mrs. Markle, Samantha is sort of saying, hey, I was okay with this separation because I knew how busy she was. In 2018, while the Duchess was dating Prince Harry, Mrs. Markle phoned her sister who was in Canada with her mother. When they connected and Mrs. Markle started to speak, the Duchess hung up the phone on her. Mrs. Markle then called back and left a message which was never returned. 
Ultimately, later in 2018, the Duchess became engaged to Prince Harry and a wedding date was set, but no one from the Duchess's family, both sides, was invited. She said no one was invited. I recall, and I actually went back and looked this up, her mother came, her mother, Doria, was at the wedding. She wore this pastel green Oscar de la Renta dress and coat, sat alone there in the church, as I read in a Harper's Bazaar article. I'm not sure where she gets this from when she says that no one was invited from both sides of the family. And I take it she's meaning both her mother and her father's side, and yet there her mother was there in the church wearing the beautiful green dress. There was an exception to the Duchess's distancing of the family in that the sister's father was verbally invited and then disinvited due to his health. Mr. Markle had suffered two heart attacks prior to the royal wedding. And let's take a moment. There is, you know, something out there about him staging some pictures for the paparazzi that may or may not have anything to do with this. Meanwhile, the media had contacted Mrs. Markle, who made positive statements. However, she did mention in an interview that the Duchess had not contacted her father and she should, as he suffered two heart attacks. At that point, the press wrote stories that Mrs. Markle bashed the Duchess. Following that, the media, with no basis, began publishing stories with fake quotes allegedly made by Mrs. Markle. At that time, the Duchess apparently responded to the fake quotes, again, her sister, without any effort to contact Mrs. Markle. On February 28th, due to the press, Mrs. Markle was interviewed, and the press was not favorable to Mrs. Markle. Meanwhile, the Duchess knew at all relevant times that her older sister, Mrs. Markle, suffered from multiple sclerosis, a debilitating disease which is exacerbated by stress. Just want to stop for a moment here to go back to this top piece where we're using passive language here. And when someone uses passive language, it takes away responsibility for who actually made the statement or who actually is engaging in that action or that behavior. Take a look at this top sentence again here. It says, in December of 2018, due to the press, Mrs. Markle was interviewed. Did Mrs. Markle seek out the interview? Did she just respond to the interview? This didn't just happen. Usually interviews have to be set up and scheduled. Everybody wants to make sure the setting and the lighting is right. So this is not some sort of thing that occurs inadvertently. It's scheduled and planned. The question is, Mrs. Markle, did you set this up or did someone else? I'm not sure what's going on here. And it's really not clear because the language is passive. There's no responsibility given for who scheduled or who set up this interview and who it was with. Finding Freedom, the book. Ultimately, on August 11th, 2020, a book, Finding Freedom, was published which was supposedly an unauthorized biography of the Duchess. However, the false information contained in the book came from the Duchess herself through her agent and communications secretary. The book was used by the Duchess to affirm the false narrative that she portrayed to the royal family that she supposedly lived a rags to riches storybook life, a life that took her from a humble beginning like that of Cinderella to the wife of a prince, a Duchess, she did not hesitate to strike back at what she mistakenly believed to be actions of Mrs. Markle, her older sister, against her. Now, if this book was an unauthorized biography and other parties were the ones who were getting this information from people, one of the things that Mrs. Markle is going to have to show is that there was some sort of relationship here between Meghan Markle and the communications secretary that leads her to believe that when the communications person gave this information to the writers, that the communications person was acting as an agent of Meghan's. So in this statement that she has here, she's not saying that Meghan called up these writers and gave them this information. She's saying these other people gave them this information. 
but she's not suing those people for defamation. She's suing Megan for defamation. So she's somehow going to have to connect them. Now, if I were the attorney writing this, I actually would have put that in there. I would have said who these people were. I would have said what their relationship was. And I would say, you know, on information and belief, because maybe I'm not entirely sure, we believe that these people are acting as agents of Meghan Markle. And therefore, you're making the connection between the, the three of them. Because as the way it's written right now, it, those people could just say, well, no, Megan didn't even know we were making those statements. So now you're suing Megan for something that she doesn't even know about. So, you know, when your attorney's writing this, you want to make sure that your attorney's connecting the dots. I see that all the time in some of this. I'm not sure who wrote this and it's not really supposed to be any sort of bad critique of them. I just would have painted a clearer picture of everything. Don't leave the the other party guessing what you're trying to say. Be really clear about making those connections. Uh, let me get back on track here. And this whole rags to riches. Well, <laughs> I may be in rags if, if I'm comparing my lifestyle to that of the lifestyle of a prince. And if you're talking about it from an economic standpoint, yes, what she had an ability to buy, before she married Harry was probably rags and now she has riches. I don't know, but that is all very subjective language. It's hard to, to say, to, you know, if I'm the person and I'm speaking, I'm saying, I feel like I led a rags to riches life. Who am I to dispute how you feel and what you think about the life that you led? I, this really, this piece really doesn't have anything to do. I don't think with Samantha Markle, how she, how Megan chooses to describe her life. There is this part though here at the end where she said she did not hesitate to strike back. That's the question. Did those conversations, did that information come from Megan Markle? She needed to distance herself from Mrs. Markle and to blame any and all issues on her. In the book, Finding Freedom, in which the Duchess provided the information through her communication secretary, there is an entire chapter 12, starting on page 310, entitled A Problem Like Samantha, which defamed Mrs. Markle and falsely describes her ploys to gain notoriety and money from her relation to the Duchess. It's stated as fact. So that's an issue there. So again, who is providing this information? How personal in, is the information? For instance, is the information only information that Meghan Markle would know, that the communications people would have no way of knowing? Let's see what was actually written here. The trouble began with Samantha Markle. Meghan's romance with Harry had hardly been public a full 24 hours when her half-sister sensed an opportunity, never mind that she hadn't seen her estranged half-sister in more than a decade. Samantha, who had changed her name from Yvonne and dyed her hair a fresh shade of blonde. The writers have written this. There's nothing in quotes to tell me that the communication secretary said this, or the communication secretary said that Meghan Markle told her this. There's no attribution here. That doesn't mean that there's not an attribution in the book that says, hey, Meghan Markle told the communication secretary this, but it's not here in this complaint. I don't see it. So I don't know who said that. It's in the book, but I don't know who said that. Samantha is saying all of this was coming about from the secretary, from the communication secretary because of Megan, but it's not clear. It's just not clear. If I were Megan's attorney, I would, you know, first thing you're going to do is file a, a motion to dismiss. There's, there's nothing in here that shows that Megan is the party who made these statements. Those statements are very subjective types of statements that somebody could just make. I don't see any attribution to Megan. This is a problem with this complaint. I, if I were Samantha Markle, I'd be worried that my complaint is going to get thrown out because it doesn't have enough information in there. All right, let's continue here. The false and defamatory statements which follow not only caused 
harm to Mrs. Markle financially in her professional occupation as a mental health counselor, but also subjected her to incomprehensible amounts of public scrutiny, causing her mental health and well-being to deteriorate. Remember earlier when I talked about taking responsibility for who was setting up that interview? Remember, it's not clear. And so she's saying now she's being subjected to all of this public scrutiny. There's a part in the book that makes it sound like she's the opportunist and that she's the one who's chasing all of this public, I guess, attention. It's not clear what's going on here. Is Mrs. Markle having to deal with it or is she seeking some of it and having to deal with it? It's just not clear in this complaint. I'm a little confused here. I would like it to be laid out just a little bit better. And it could be that that's just the way it is in the book. Maybe it's just that unclear in the book. And so this is why we're going to court. Somebody is going to figure this out for us. On page 310, the book states that the Duchess and Mrs. Markle's paths have crossed only twice since they grew up. The book states that. It doesn't, this particular paragraph, number 21, in this complaint that I'm reading, says the book states that. It doesn't say that the Duchess or Meghan Markle said that. So in paragraph 22, where it says this was false as the Duchess and Mrs. Markle at one point lived together and have been in frequent contact, this allegation is aimed to discredit the relationship between the Duchess and Mrs. Markle and to make Mrs. Markle appear to be an opportunist. But, but you're not saying that Meghan Markle said this. You said the book states it. Again, if you're going to claim that Meghan Markle defamed you, part of what you first have to prove is that she was the one who actually made the statements. And we'll get to that when we get to the defamation part. But that is actually an element of it. This is the person who made the statements, not that party over there, the people who wrote the book. If they're the ones who made the false statement, then you need to be suing them, not Meghan Markle. And I'm not trying to support one over the other. I'm just saying you're not attributing any statements here to Meghan. And this is what you want to show in your complaint. I'm confused as to why you're not suing the book writers. On page 311, the book falsely states, partly due to their 17-year age difference, Megan had crossed paths with their sister only twice growing up. On page 311, the book states that there is only one picture of Mrs. Markle and the Duchess. It was written in Finding Freedom. If there were more, Samantha would have sold them. This is also false, as there were and are many photographs of the sisters together. Again, the book states Mrs. Markle is saying that this information came from the communication secretary. But again, how do you know that? How are you coming to this conclusion that they said that? There, there's nothing in your paragraph here that adds any of these other people here. You just keep saying the book states, the book states, the book states. Sue the book writers in. The implication of this defamatory statement is to accuse Mrs. Markle of being an opportunist who would do anything to make a dollar, even if it meant disposing of sentimental photographs revealing private moments between the Duchess and Mrs. Markle. I think she's saying that Meghan Markle threw those pictures away. I think that's what she's saying. The book, we're back to the book. The book on page 312 went further and states that Mrs. Markle reached out to the son with her story about how snagging a royal had been the Duchess's lifelong ambition. Worse, it said that Mrs. Markle was handsomely paid. I think I'll have to read that one again. The book states that Mrs. Markle reached out to the son with her story about how snagging a royal had been the Duchess's lifelong ambition and worked it said that Mrs. Markle had been handsomely paid. Okay. Again, the book is stating this. She then says, this statement is false. Mrs. Markle has never contacted the son regarding the Duchess and she was never paid anything from the son, at least handsomely. Again, why are you not at least suing both Meghan Markle and the book writers and the publisher? I don't understand why you're only suing 
your sister and not these people who wrote the book if these people are the ones who are putting these statements in here again you're not adding the communication secretary you're just saying you think this came from them but you don't have anything in here to show that it must have somehow come from them on page 313 the book states meg didn't grow up with samantha she barely saw her it's a statement it doesn't sound like anything that's really personal anybody could make up this statement and again i'm just saying this complaint could have had a lot more substance to it if you don't want to get thrown out on summary judgment because you don't have enough facts in here to meet the standard for defamation on three page 314 the book states the half sisters have never been close again a subjective kind of statement because mrs markle may feel yes we have been close whereas megan markle might feel well we've been sisters but i haven't been really really close to her so i wouldn't say i've never been close that's a subjective statement two people may have two totally different feelings about that that doesn't mean that it rises to the level of defamation on page 317 the book falsely states that mrs markle was not invited to the duchess's first wedding this was another false statement designed to bolster the false position that the two sisters had no real relationship the duchess even states that she asked her father to intervene with mrs markle and that he had told mrs markle that she is hurting the duchess none of this was true let's assume none of this is true let's assume all of these statements are false the question then comes well who made these statements you're going to have to show that megan made these statements or that megan had someone else share those statements on her behalf and then are these statements just statements of opinion statements of feeling this is going to be a hard one i think for mrs markle to win just based on what she has here i'm assuming she has a lot of evidence that she's going to present in court oprah primetime show after the release of finding freedom which was published on august 11th of 2020 subsequently on march 7th 2021 the duchess and prince harry appeared on an oprah winfrey cbs primetime special which was viewed by approximately 50 million people worldwide during the course of the show which aired on march 7th 2021 and was subsequently replayed on numerous televisions and online media platforms the duchess stated that she was an only child who only met mrs markle a handful of times and that mrs markle only changed her surname to markle after the duchess started dating prince harry so that mrs markle could cash in on her newfound fame now now you finally get to this point here and i want to go back here because i want to be very specific this is different from everything else that mrs markle that samantha markle has said this is the first time when she's been able to specifically attribute statements to Meghan Markle. She has where these statements occurred, the Oprah prime time show, the date that the appearance occurred, how many people saw it. And then, then as we scroll down, we see on the next page, she actually has quotes around what Meghan Markle said so that it's very clear she has now in this one connected all of the dots and can say this is what Meghan Markle said in quotes here on this date during this interview where all of these people saw it and it is not true that's how some of these other statements should have been laid out my personal opinion now let's talk about the actual statements themselves because that is something different these statements again now you're talking about what's subjective and what's objective what's a feeling what's an opinion what's a person saying well you know i thought this i felt that well that's somebody's feelings and opinions it's going to be hard to say whether or not their feeling or opinion is true because only they know that in this case it says the duchess stated that she was an only child well from the standpoint of being an objective fact is she an only child no 
Did she feel like she was an only child? She could have felt that way. So what we have here is an only child in quotations. We don't know what Megan said before that. If she said something like, I felt like I was, quote, an only child, well, then she's talking about her feelings. It's going to be very hard for you to say, but it's a lie for you to have those feelings. Mm, no. And then Megan Markle is going to win that one. And Samantha Markle is going to lose. So even though she checked the box on all of those other things I talked about, if somebody's saying, I felt like I was an only child, even though I had sisters, I felt like we moved all the time, even though we only moved two times in 10 years. Those are her feelings that she's talking about. So this really depends on the context. We talk about that sometimes. You just can't pull quotes out, three words, and and try to, to, to say what, what happened. You actually need to have the whole sentence and maybe a sentence before and a sentence after to really sum that up. Then it says, who only met Mrs. Markle a handful of times. Well, what is a handful of times? So a handful of times might be like five or six times. During what time? I don't know. So I'm not even clear about that. It could be that this is one that Samantha Markle wins. A handful sounds a little bit more quantitative, something that you might be able to say a handful means five or six versus somebody saying many or a lot or something like that. And then this thing about the name change, Markle, it says, um, and that Mrs. Markle only changed her surname to Markle after the Duchess started dating Prince Harry. All of that, you can go back to the actual interview to see what Megan said. And if Megan said that, it could be that what she said was false and she made a false statement. It's hard to tell what's said here. The only thing in quotations here is the name. I didn't watch that interview. I don't know what to tell you, but I have a feeling it will be addressed when Meghan Markle files her answer to this complaint. She then goes on to say, none of this is true. All right, let's go back to the last part of this that I think we're going to, to cover um, in this background information. These prevail prevarications were greatly injurious to Mrs. Markle because it caused a negative public reaction. Mrs. Markle lives in a small Florida city, Lakeland, where she is well known. Moreover, she is known because she is the sister of the Duchess who enjoys great wealth, great fame, wealth, and prestige. The Duchess is a public figure with a huge fan base. When the Duchess gave information to be published in what turned out to be a bestseller and appeared on the CBS Oprah Winfrey, special viewed by 50 million people she instilled anger in her fan base against mrs markle which includes a significant part of the population of lakeland suddenly emotionally connected fans turned against this supposed imposter who was distant from her younger sister mrs markle was seen as a greedy opportunist who people believed had no relationship with her sister and who was attempting to cash in on her sister's success and fame all of, the remar all of the false remarks in the book Finding Freedom and in the CBS Oprah Winfrey interview were false, were said directly by the Duchess with full knowledge that the statements she was saying were false. All the statements by the Duchess were written or said with malice in that she knew that they were false and she also knew that they would cause harm to her older sister, Mrs. Markle. Moreover, in this case, the defamatory statements were publicized on a worldwide scale by a public figure, the Duchess of Sussex. By virtue of Mrs. Markle's relation to her half-sister, the public took an interest in Mrs. Markle. I would say I did take an interest. I was sort of like, who is her sister? The false and malicious statements described above caused a substantial, irreparable, prejudice, injury, and harm to Mrs. Markle's reputation as a substantial, sizable, and appreciable fraction of the relevant community and caused her great anxiety and emotional distress. Here's, okay, this is, I have to stop. And as you can see, I almost act like I'm getting giddy or excited because here again is one of those moments when Samantha Markle can use facts to show everything she is saying. And so instead of just having these statements, 
why not include statements that were made on Twitter, articles that have been written about her, images in stories and blog posts, videos that might be on YouTube. I would include all of these things in here to lay out and show how much response and engagement people were taking the interest in this. I would include all of that in there to make it very clear that all of a sudden, because I'm the sister of the Duchess of Sussex, I am now being subjected to all of this. I would include some of the worst comments that people made about me so that I really got my point across and drove it home. And she did not take the opportunity to do this. I'm not blaming her and I'm not, <laughs> I don't want to sound like I'm blaming the attorney. I'm just saying it's a lost, it's a lost opportunity to double down on what you're saying here. You put these statements in there. Why not back them up? and show the actual statements that were being made. Because what you have here is an opportunity to do that. You really talk about these false and malicious statements. Let me go back to that so you can see it. These false and malicious statements described above cause substantial irreparable prejudice, injury, and harm. Why not put some of these in here so that everyone who's looking at this can see it? So that when you go before the judge, you have it. Why not go ahead and put this in here? I would definitely include this if I were writing this. I'd put all kinds of stuff. I'd find the worst of the worst because, and I don't mean to sound like I'm going overboard with that. What I'm saying is when you have someone who's talking about you personally, it can be easy to start to second guess who you are and to feel some kind of way about yourself. Your self-esteem drops. And if this is what was happening to Mrs. Markle, then why not put some of those statements in here so that a judge looking at this can say, yeah, I would have been bothered by some of those statements too. But without having them here, you just have the these statements that, oh yes, and she receives hateful emails, okay? So it says, as a direct result, of the Duchess's false and defamatory statements, Mrs. Markle receives hateful emails and messages on a regular basis, is subjected to ongoing negative media portrayals, news articles, nasty negative press, and her reputation has been so damaged that she has been unable to work as a mental health counselor. For example, Mrs. Markle was forced to seek and obtain an injunction for protection against stalking in Polk County, Florida, against one of the defendant's zealous fans. All predicate acts were which were required to have been done, have been done, or the requirement has been waived. Let me talk about these last two pieces here, because again, I think that these are two areas where she really could have sort of doubled down on this a little bit more. Hateful emails. That means somebody has gone through the trouble, not just tagged you in a post, or just wrote an article about you or sat and did a video about you like this, but they went through the trouble of finding your email address and sending you a hateful email. That's a whole nother level of harassment there. That is concerning. Why not include some of that specifically in here, those hateful emails? Probably because they've been deleted. Like who's going to keep that in their email. You're going to get it and then you're going to delete it because you don't want to open up your email every day and see this hateful message there. And she says it occurred on a regular basis. Now, here's the thing. If she's still getting some of these, then at the point that you decide you're going to engage in this lawsuit, at that point, you're going to say, okay, I'm going to start holding on to some of these because now not only am I saying, well, I got them in the past and I threw them away, but I'm still getting them and I'm still getting them. And it's two years later and I'm still getting them. That's a way of showing not just how bad they are, but how vicious some people are in that they will continue to harass you about this and that you continue to be thrust in the public eye. So there's a way that she could have added a lot more substance to her arguments here. Now, this doesn't mean that this is not going to be presented if they go to trial, but the thing I'm talking about is you don't wanna get thrown out on summary judgment. So you wanna make sure you provide enough evidence in your complaint so that the judge says, oh yes, there are definitely some material issues 
here that we need to hammer out. This last one, especially, for example, Mrs. Marple was forced to seek and obtain an injunction for protection against stalking. Oh, I would include that in there. You know, when did that happen? How was, how long was the injunction for? What kind of threats did the person make? Did the person come to your house? Were they following you from your job to your home? Were they following you in your car? What kind of stalking was going on? Those are the kind of details you would want to be very specific about in this. And so that's it for part one of this complaint, sister versus sister, Samantha Markle suing the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle over statements that have been written, comments that have been published, all sorts of things that have been said. She is attributing all of this to Meghan Markle, and she is alleging that this is defamation. So hope that brings you up to speed on where this is. In another video, I will definitely go over the defamation part of this. And then hopefully at some point in time, we will have the answer that gets filed by Meghan Markle in response, where she gets to respond to some of these things that have been alleged in this complaint. So if that brings you up to speed, if you have a little bit more understanding of what's going on between the Marple sisters, then go ahead and give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Mwah. Peace.